NASA recently revealed the current state of Boeing Starliner. Are the batteries at risk of running out? Will it ever return to Earth? Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving into some exciting updates about Boeing Starliner. One of our community members recently asked about the spacecraft's current status, including its return schedule, the condition of its thrusters, whether its batteries still have power, etc. I think these are crucial questions, and I'm glad that someone brought them up. Finally, NASA has provided detailed answers, and we'll cover everything in this episode. So, as you all know, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is undergoing an extended mission at the International Space Station, ISS, a significant development for its first-ever astronaut mission. Initially planned to last just over a week, Starliner's stay in orbit is now anticipated to continue well beyond its original 45-day mission limit, according to recent NASA updates. This comes amidst ongoing analyses and testing prompted by technical issues encountered shortly before and during its docking at the ISS. Starliner launched on June 5, 2024, marking a pivotal moment for Boeing and NASA. This mission, known as the Crew Flight Test CFT, is Starliner's first manned mission following two prior uncrewed flights. It carries NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, both seasoned test pilots with extensive experience in evaluating new spacecraft systems. The capsule successfully docked with the ISS on June 6, despite initial challenges that necessitated a brief delay and reattempt. These difficulties were primarily associated with the Reaction Control System (RCS) thrusters, where several malfunctioned during the docking process. Furthermore, helium leaks were detected within the capsule, adding to the complications faced by the crew and ground control teams. By the way, let me just introduce our today's sponsor, Fume. Well, I recently stumbled upon something that's quite interesting. It's a neat little award-winning flavored air device called Fume. Now, if you're thinking, flavored air? What's that all about? Stick around because it's not what you might expect. It's a sleek, high-quality gadget that you can carry around and use anywhere. And when I say anywhere, I mean it. There's no vapor, no batteries, and best of all, no nicotine. Now, I have to admit, I've had my fair share of trying to ditch some not-so-great habits. Imagine always having that urge to reach for something out of habit. Fume fits right into that scenario. It gives you something satisfying to hold on to and even fidget with. Seriously, the magnets and clicks on this thing are pretty fun to mess around with. Okay, let's talk flavors. Fume offers some awesome choices, like crisp mint and orange vanilla. They're closer to herbal teas than anything else, so you get this smooth, enjoyable experience. I tried the crisp mint myself, and honestly, it's a refreshing change. So if you're interested and want to give it a try, here's something special. Fume has served over 300,000 customers already, and you could be next. For a limited time, you can use my code SpaceX community to get a free Fume base when you order the Journey Pack. Just head over to tryfume.com and use code SpaceX community or scan the QR code you see on the screen right now. Get started with your own Fume and join this new wave of flavored air. So now, we are going to discuss about the ongoing investigations and thruster testing done by NASA. Efforts to identify and resolve the issues with Starliner's RCS thrusters are continuing. You know, the spacecraft has 28 thrusters in total, with five showing inconsistent behavior during the docking phase. As of the latest updates, only one thruster will be taken offline for the spacecraft's eventual return to Earth. This comprehensive evaluation of the thrusters includes ground testing, which commenced on July 3rd at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. These tests aim to replicate the conditions experienced by the thrusters from launch through docking and later from undocking to landing. The ground testing is a crucial step to understand the thruster anomalies and ensure the reliability of Starliner for future missions. Dan Niedermeyer, Boeing's lead engineer for thruster testing, emphasized the importance of these evaluations. He stated, We really want to understand the thruster and how we use it in flight. 
we will learn a lot from these thruster firings that will be valuable for the remainder of the crew flight test and future missions. While the thruster testing continues, Wilmore and Williams have been actively supporting the ISS crew with various tasks. They have been involved in organizing stowage and conducting maintenance activities, such as disassembling an empty NanoRax CubeSat deployer and preparing for future NanoRax missions. This work is crucial for the ongoing operations at the ISS and provides valuable insights into the day-to-day -day challenges astronauts face during extended space missions. In parallel, teams at NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston and Boeing's Mission Control Center at Kennedy Space Center have been conducting extensive system checks on Starliner. These checks include repressurizing the propellant manifolds and updating mission data loads, MDLs. MDLs are critical files that enable the spacecraft's computer to understand current inertial and relative navigation states, Earth rotation, and thermal conditioning on thrusters used during Starliner's return. Chloe Merrick, the Starliner flight director, highlighted the spacecraft's preparedness for the extended mission. We updated some products on board to support the continued docked duration through the month of July and through the higher positive beta periods we are approaching, she said. Starliner is healthy, and no anomalies were written against the spacecraft. Now let's address the crucial question. What's the status of the Starliner's batteries? It's been over a month. Are the batteries still holding up, or are they dead? Let's discuss one of the significant factors enabling the mission extension is the performance of Starliner's batteries. Initially, NASA had set a 45-day limit for the mission, constrained by the crew module batteries. However, recent assessments have shown that the batteries are performing well, allowing for a potential doubling of the mission duration. Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's Commercial Crew Program, explained that the batteries are being recharged by the station and their performance has not degraded. This development opens the possibility of Starliner remaining docked for up to 90 days or even more, providing ample time for thorough testing and analyses. Stitch pointed out that Starliner is ultimately rated to stay in orbit for as long as 210 days once operational missions commence. However, as this is only Starliner's third mission in space, and its first with astronauts on board, NASA had initially been cautious about the battery performance in orbit. The current mission has provided valuable data, confirming the battery's reliability and setting a precedent for future missions. Next, what have the crews been up to during this period? Well, during their extended stay, Wilmore and Williams have been invaluable in assisting the ISS crew with various tasks. Wilmore, for instance, worked on the Moon Microscope Project, a demonstration that allows flight surgeons on Earth to diagnose illnesses using microscopic samples from space. This technology could prove essential for diagnosing medical conditions on future missions to the Moon and Mars. Williams, on the other hand, conducted routine orbital plumbing and audited U.S. stowage items in the Zarya module. Their work highlights the diverse range of activities astronauts undertake while on the ISS, from scientific research to maintaining the station's operational efficiency. Canadian Space Agency astronaut Josh Kutrick, who will fly on Starliner 1 following the current mission, has also been involved in the mission as a capsule communicator, CAPCOM. Kutrick worked closely with Wilmore and Williams during the system checks, ensuring that the transfer of MDLs was successful and that all software updates were in a good configuration. As of July 9th, Starliner remains docked at the ISS, with its mission extended indefinitely while testing and analyses continue. The spacecraft is in good condition, with its batteries performing well and no significant anomalies reported. NASA and Boeing are focused on understanding the root causes of the thruster issues and ensuring that any necessary design changes are implemented for future missions. This extended mission provides an invaluable opportunity to gather data and refine Starliner's systems, setting the stage for its future role in NASA's ISS operations. The upcoming tests at White Sands will be pivotal in determining the thruster's reliability and performance. The findings from these tests will inform the design and operational strategies for future missions, including potential six-month ISS rotation missions starting as early as 2025. 
So let's wind up by thanking Fume for sponsoring this episode, and hope we can witness a safe return of the Boeing Starliner capsule. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.